Well, hey folks, BC7 here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Canadian Village map. So I made a couple of additions to the farm. I've also made a couple of subtractions. One of which being, I seriously think, the uh, breeding facilities are quite broken. Uh, oh. Hmm. What have you done? Okay. Um. Let's get this guy straightened out here. I guess I didn't have him quite as a parallel as one might like. Um, I find it a little bit difficult, to be honest with you. And I don't know why. How's that? Looks all right. Okay. Uh, it should do it. Let's see what happens. Let's hire a worker and jump out. Oops. Okay. Let's, uh, let's dismiss our worker. Um... Dee dee dee. All right. Should slowly accelerate up to three kilometers per hour. She's screaming now. Uh, it won't give me that, eh? Where are you going, dude? No, 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 that's too far. Huh. I take it I didn't start in the center that time. Yeah, it should have stopped just past the end of the building. I did measure it once. Huh. But at least it seems to be coming back parallel now. Okay, getting up to speed. It may well be the... Uh, No, it didn't get tossed by that. It is coming back on its own track, so I think we've got that part of it worked out. Now, it should come right between these two. It should be about the halfway point, so... Let's see how I do here. Alright, so from there, and it should be 4250 near as I can tell. It should make it to both sides. Alright. I'm going to assume, oops, sorry, that this guy is now functional. Let's go and see if we can get our other one to run properly. Now, near as I can tell, this doesn't actually do anything. Um, I believe it's just to sort of uh, defray a little bit of the cost on maintenance of running the actual robot. Because that thing actually makes you money a day, and that thing costs you money a day. So, and, yeah, not uh, all of it either. I do believe it costs more to run than it does to, uh, like, you don't profit from it, I guess. It's the easiest way to put that is you do not profit from it. Alright, there should be, uh, no, I haven't picked it up from the shop yet. My apologies. Do, 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 do. Okay. Well, it's on its way back. 
as long as it doesn't run into that thing or any of this kit, we should actually be all right. Um, hmm. <laughs> well, that will be something to pay attention to, won't it? I mean, simple enough. I can just simply reduce the, uh, what they call the angle. You'll see if we bring up our HUD. Well, I've got a worker, so it's not going to let me do it, is it? Uh, I'm going to let him get close, and then that's going to be it. Oh, he's slowing. He's slowing. We might actually have it. Come on, buddy. Ooh, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Hey, look at that. <laughs> that's pretty perfect. All right. Okay, I'm uh, oop, fairly confident that is now doing what I want it to do. So, let's go grab ourselves our other robot. That's Huey. We're going to go get ourselves Dewey. And if this works well, we may get ourselves a Louie for one of the pig pens. So, the breeding animals. My guppies. Um, you may notice I have uh, two millions of dollars. That would be... <laughs> yeah. Now, maybe I hallucinated the whole thing, but I'm pretty sure that last episode... Now, I did advance things to the next morning. So, last episode, 12 game hours or so ago, um, I sold off what I considered to be a large surplus of our animals. Okay, to get this thing to work... We need to jump in it, turn it on, and you'll know the little skirt's moving. And then, with our right mouse button, give her a wiggle to the right. Okay, that's transport mode. Now, I'm pretty sure I can turn it off. There we go, and jump back out. Okay. Now. Oh boy. Now we have to shift back to the machine. There we go. Let's take our little toy home. Do 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 do. So yeah, um, I had two hundred and eight sheep. I had over 200 pigs. <laughs> it was just crazy. So, what I've done this time, all of my breeding animals, I reduced them, and that was game time 9 a.m. I reduced them all to 10 animals apiece. All of the breeding pens. So, let's have a look. Uh, breeding sheep, 10. Nice. Uh, breeding cows, 10. Excellent. Breeding pigs, 10. Lovely. Now, the normal creatures I did not mess with. So, come 9 a.m. tomorrow's game time, I will uh, once again revisit this. And if there's a hugely ridiculous amount, then I will likely shut down the breeding facilities. All right. Now, with that in place... The theory is, I will never have to clean up after these animals again. All I will have to do is stop the robot when I want to uh, move a trailer of feed in, or whatever that sort of uh, maintenance, but as far as cleaning up after them, that should no longer be an issue. Again, there's a daily cost, plus the purchase, but they're relatively inexpensive. And I watched some videos on it, um, not YouTube, or not, uh, not farm sim videos. I watched some videos on using the real one. Okay, what do we got here? All right, this building is identical. So, should be exactly halfway between. All right. Good. 
Let's, uh, well, we've got to switch back again. Drop it. We, and let's just remove ourselves. There we go. Alright, let's jump out. Let's get this thing set up. So, once again, E to get inside it. Uh, we'll bring up our hood. Okay. Now, why to... Well, first of all, it's your signal lights that will bring up your grid. Alright. Um, let's start it up. Okay. Because I want to make sure we're power all out. I also got to make sure we're sort of going the right way. Which is, whoa. Of course, this way and that way. How's that look? Out a bit. Okay. We're approximately halfway between. That sort of looks parallel to me. Let's press straight forward. Looks good. Let's press straight back. Looks good. Uh, center about there. All right, now we want to set the angle. Now the angle is telling it how far to go, oddly enough. And the other one worked out to be 42.50. So let's get up into that range. There we go, 42.50. So now we should be able to, uh, moving the left, holding the left mouse and moving that, we can shut it out of transport mode. And we should be able to simply hire a worker. And let's watch our little Wanderbot in action. Oops, I want to jump in here for just a sec. And, all right, that one doesn't look like it's going to need adjusting, so let's jump out. All right. Huh. All right, so it's going to have a little issue here, I guess. And I think that's probably because the ground is so low there. But you can see we've got the length right down pat. That's exactly what we need. So. I think I might have an issue here. I think what the issue is... is we may not be quite close enough for it to be offloading. So... see if we can't get in a little closer here. How's that? Are we still fairly square? Uh, no, we're off, aren't we? Mm, looks pretty good. All right, I think that should probably... Although we still don't seem to be unloading, do we? Come on, don't be doing this to me now. Okay, let's try that. Oh, he's going to take off in the same direction again, eh? All right. Excuse me. Yeah, da, da, da. 
Yeah, it definitely doesn't want to touch that. Let's just watch it for a moment here and see if it... And slows down. Hmm. It almost looks like it lurched a little bit off angle, but it still seems to be going back all right. So let's give it some time here and see what happens. I suspect this part is simply in a trough. But we want to see if it actually ends up picking anything up from this section here. I mean, the other issue may be that that trough is simply too full. It's a really good possibility. Yeah, I have a feeling that's what's going on. The little machine itself is full at the moment and won't empty into the trough for the same reason when I try to dump a bucket in, it won't empty. The trough is merely full. All right, let's make sure she stops in the right place, or at least reverses. Seems much closer to the trough, eh? It also kind of looks to me... No. No, I think she's all right. I think it's all right. Yep, I'm convinced. It should do its job once the... Because uh... remember, too, I just took this down to 10 cows from 190 or whatever the heck it was. So likely that thing's going to waddle back and forth a few times before it's allowed to spit up its breakfast. So, oops. <laughs> yeah. We'll try hitting the right button, see how that works for us. So there you are. If you're uh, wanting to make your life robotically easier, that seems to be a reasonable, uh, a reasonable way to do it. Now, I know it's not going to work here, because for uh, reasons that are just sort of beyond me, these guys spit up grass. But you can't put grass in the trough. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but that's all right. We've got our cows automated. Um, the sheep we could certainly do as well. Uh, but we'll see how this works. And if I'm happy with how this whole setup, like if they don't start going wonky and bashing into troughs, we'll maybe get ourselves a couple more. You know, show the world that our farm is capable of going high tech. Yes, indeedly, dang doodly, we're there now. So, the other thing. Now look at this wonderful little monkey in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the videos I saw were actually quite cool. There's a lot of different models of those things. And, uh, now, I mean, keep in mind in real life where they're using them. You don't actually have a trough. You know, you'd have something there to stop the cows from getting out, like usually a bar. But beyond that, it would just be the floor extended and you'd dump stuff on their side of the bar and, you know. Well, we've all seen how our dogs and cats eat, and just imagine the same thing with a face the size of a cow. And you can see how they push a lot of stuff out of reach, right? Because once they can't get their head any further past the bar, which would be theoretically the edge of the trough, that's it. They can't eat. So yeah, neat little machine. Neat little machine. We'll just let that beep away there until it, you know burns out, blows up, whatever the heck they do when they've had about enough of working for a living. And we'll carry on from there. Now I have a lot of this to deal with. Well, I sold one of the Kamaz trucks. Uh, I picked up a Flegel transport pack. And it has a rather interest... Oh, and I didn't add it, silly me. I rather... Yeah. Are you empty? Are you, like, wait... Ugh. Uh, you're full. Of course you're full. Well, why wouldn't you be full? <laughs> Let's face it. But yeah, I picked up a, a different truck. 
rather nice, rather nice vehicle. Don't know what we'll do with that $2 million. I think we have pretty much everything we need. And as we will be selling a couple of more fields as we end up harvesting, that's only going to go up. So, who knows? Maybe we'll, you know, donate to the SPCA or something. Yeah, I watched a real-life video on these things, too, the Chrome Big X. And as awkward-looking and weird as they are, that's, yeah, it's a pretty uh, accurate representation. So, <laughs> you know, oh, whatever, whatever. Just because I think something's good engineering sure as heck don't mean it is or ain't, let me tell you. That's indeed. <laughs> So we also have a trailer that's completely full of compost, a trailer that's completely full of milk, a harvester that's completely full of tobacco. So, yeah. There's, um... Yeah. Sad, eh? It takes everything but a thousand liters. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it isn't like this farm won't keep you busy, I'll tell you. But I do think, even though the uh, root crops are apparently not broken, I do think the breeding animals are quite busted. Which, I mean, that's alright. Like I said, it's just something we're going to have to keep a tighter rein on. You know. Zimply poot. So, I'd like to turn this into silage, please. Could we uh, do that? Why do you tank, man? I think we can, considering it says there's nothing in it at the moment. Beautiful. Now, we will still need grass, of course. It has its practical uses. But, when it comes to making silage, you just can't eat corn. you know that at one time corn was not much more than a blade of grass? So, for everyone that uh, screams about GMOs, now I'm not talking about, you know, some of the weird stuff like putting antibiotics into animals and plants, but if you look at the reality of genetically modified organisms, um, you know, it really covers everything from beagles to corn. You know, at one time corn, like I said, was a very grass-like. I'm lost, aren't I? Yep. <laughs> Expect me to talk and drive. Yeah, it was a very grass-like uh, plant with only tiny little nuds on it. And it was, again, selective breeding by humans to get these nubs to grow that uh, we have this bizarre crop. So, but it's like that with a lot of things. Although cats, strangely enough, like, I'm sure all of you know that when dogs were domesticated, basically we chose to domesticate dogs. And, you know, originally from wolves, and realized that if we continuously grabbed the ones that were reasonably friendly, as they scrounged from our campfires and our campsites. Um, the end resulting pups were generally much friendlier as well. And that's a good thing. And through that particular system, you know, we were eventually able to come up with domestic dogs. All right, let's get this GPS running. Cats, on the other hand, oh, huh? There we go. Cats, on the other hand, actually did it themselves. They selectively, and it's a weird thing because it is selective breeding, but it's natural selective breeding as opposed to what we did, which is, of course, an artificial selective breeding. Um, yeah, cats actually did that themselves. 
they did their own selective breeding of those cats that would relate better to humans and self-domesticated. I know, it's a little weird. Another rather odd thing about cats, by the way, is that one in three people on the planet actually have a virus in their body that's caused by cats. So there you are. And when cats give that virus to rodent populations, it makes the rodents lose their fear of cats, which of course makes for easy snackage. Right? Yeah. Anyway, I don't know how we get onto that. It's certainly nothing to do with the price of chaff on uh, the Canadian village map, but <laughs> there you go. So, just in case you guys thought I was just one of these rank amateur cat people. No, no. <laughs> no, no, I'm thoroughly warped. So. All right, well, this is a worthy project. Problem is, it's also, as I said, kind of... Can I hire a worker for this, I wonder? I guess, eh? They'll just stop when they're done, won't they? Apparently. All right, so... Uh, where do I really want to be? I want to be in a truck, I'm sure. <laughs> so, let's try group three. No. Yeah, no. No. Again, no, although I do need to get you off of here because I think you're in the middle of somebody else's field, aren't you? Yes. You, however, I require a very valuable service from. Um, there he is. <laughs> I forgot which field I was doing. So this is a tobacco crop. Yes, long live big tobacco. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. I was a smoker for years. I joined when I or started when I first joined the Navy. I guess I was one of those people that got tired of hearing smoke them if you got them and realized I just never had them. So yes, I will blame the Canadian military for my initial addiction to that disgusting freaking thing. And happily say I have not smoked a cigarette in seven years. Yep, yep, yep. So what does this look like? Okay, just a sort of nondescript shredded brown semi-translucent mess. Alrighty, I can accept that. <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Helps if I hire you like once in a while as opposed to just, uh, yeah. Thank you. Alright, so now. Actually, let's. So I realize I've left you running. Now, let us jump once again. Ah, I have not yet added it, have I? I don't think so, man. No, I haven't. All right. So, uh, hmm. Let's go to E. And let's go to the unassigned groups, shall we? Uh, now, oh, rats. Here we go. Man TGS. Hmm. I guess it's got to be that one. Yeah. No, no, that's that one. Huh. All right, well. I seem to have lost a truck here, so I'm going to have to use the old-fashioned Tabaruni. No, it wouldn't be you or you or you, although, like I said, I've really got to get you guys out of here. 
Oh my. Yeah, I sold the field and then just sort of sat there with my harvester blocking it up and stuff. I'm sure the farmer that came through here and planted these new crops uh, wasn't impressed. I told him I'd get all of this out of his way. There we go. Alright. Let's get you reasonably buttoned up here. Okay. Because somewhere there's a uh, low wagon or a uh, low loader, I should say, with your name on it. So, something we will have to deal with, buddy. Okay. This is the last of my corn. This is just going to go straight into the silos, I think. This is not the truck that I lost, by the way. <laughs> no, indeed. But I think, guys, from the look of the big clock on the wall, looks like Mickey's left eye is pointing towards the 30 and his right eye is pointing towards the 1 minute 39 mark. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we should probably call it here. So, hope everybody enjoyed. We got, uh, we got our robots working. You are working, aren't you? Looks to me like you're just sitting over there. Oh no, there you go. Look at that, eh? Ooh. Oh yeah, Lily Gino blocked. I guess that just means they can't uh, empty. Hmm. Anyway, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed. It's uh, not a bad episode. I'm really surprised those worked <laughs> that easily. <laughs> it's just too easy for me to completely uh, bollocks things like that beyond belief. So... Thanks again for hanging out, guys. We will catch you next time. Take care of each other, and ciao for now.